Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to special OAA Now football preview show. This is the Red Division here. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, host of Last Three Brain Cells, one of the hosts between Taramina's on OAA Radio Television. Like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Ori Neighbor Television and on YouTube. Last few weeks we've talked about the OA going to four divisions. Um, we've had the gold a couple weeks ago, then we had the blue, then the white last week, and now this week we have one of the toughest divisions in the state of Michigan, the OA Red. So let's look at this division here more in depth. There's six teams in this division. Let's look at the newest member of the Red Division, which is Rochester Adams Highlanders. Adams last year went to the Division I state finals last year following the Belleville. Um, it, was a, um, it was a great experience for Adams last year. Of course, they were back in the state finals for the first time since 2002 when they won the Division II state title. So here is Adams coach Tony Petrito at the podium talking about the strengths of the Highlanders. Thanks, Coach Vernon. Um, we're really excited to be back. Uh, we had an amazing schedule that we're going to talk about. Uh, this year we signed two open dates on the coach Lake St. Mary's Week 1 and Stuart Night Stevenson in Week 9. We're going to do our best to represent the OA in those games. Um, if we get after it, we're going to stay hungry and humble. That should be nothing this year. You guys all know that. Um, we have a great senior class that's gone. This guy got replaced and he was good because of chemistry and love. And I agree with Coach Line, it's the most powerful word in our sport. So let our guys introduce themselves. I'm Brady Priest, going tight end to you. I'm Nick Patera, slot DB. Rock Orsini, linebacker, no line. Liam B. Eagle, line D line. I want to help you have a great season. Thank you. When you look at Adams this year, of course, they do have the skilled players coming back, led, of course, by quarterback Parker Pico. Pico is a heck of an athlete, baseball kid, committed to Alabama for baseball. Um, really good athlete. Um, then you have his brother Tate Pico, uh, linebacker. Uh, defensively, he is one of the top. Um, he's a very underrated defensive player. I remember he took one back for a touchdown against Grand Blank in the district in the, in the um, Division I um, state semifinals. They got Nick Patera running back. I'm really high on this kid. Um, Rocco Orsini is one of the top linemen. Also, Hassan Murray is another one I'm, I'm high on. But one of the guys I'm really high on is Brady Prescorn. Of course, um, Prescorn is a... Um, a tight end. Um, he had two very good. He had two touchdowns last year against Belleville in the um, Division One State Finals. Um, so I'm really, really high on this group. Of course, Adams runs the Veer Option offense, which is a um, very illusional offense. It's a very you know Navy runs this offense. Um, you know Nebraska used to run this offense. So I caught up with Coach Petrito to talk about the Veer. Also, I forgot to mention Ferris State also runs his offense as well. So I caught, talked to Coach Petrito about the Veer, about the outlook for the Highlanders coming into the season. I got the coach of Rochester Adams, Tony Petrito, here. Of course, last season we were, they were a Division I state finalist. Um, talk about this team um, you got coming back this year. Uh, this is a great group of kids. They learned a lot from last year's seniors. Uh, we have a lot of talent. Parker Pico's back at quarterback, and he's going to be, I think, one of the top five players in the state of Michigan. His brother, Tate, is a tackle machine. And then these four guys I brought here are all pretty special. So big shoes to fill. Uh, we know our schedule is incredibly rigorous, but we're going to work really hard and try to compete and start with a good game against St. Mary's. Talk about being in the red again. Of course, um, you've had some history being in the white and in the red. So talk about being in that red again this year. Yeah, it, I mean, traditionally, it's the best conference there is. Um, and we have mad respect for those schools and they're much bigger than us and they're really well coached so we know we have to be at our best uh, we got to play two teams from the red last year and so we had a little bit of a taste but doing it every week this year is going to be even harder what is the expectations here coach well we're going to try to get as good as we can by the time we play st mary's and hopefully stay healthy and improve so we can be competitive and strong in the red thank you real much coach you got it buddy okay let's see here Forgot to mention Colin Simco also handling the punting duties for Adams as well. But when you look at the schedule for Rochester Adams, it is very vigorous. Um, they open up the year at home against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Of course, this is the first meeting between these two teams. Um, Tony Petrito, I know, knows St. Mary's from his days at work in the Catholic League, of course, when he, um, before coming over to Adams. Um, 
So he does know the Catholic League very, very well. Um, he's had some battles with Birdman Brother Rice. He's had some battles with them. Um, with, um, so I'm curious to see how Adams matches up. First home game against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, so I'm curious to see that match up there. Um, week two, they take on Rochester. Um, at Rochester, of course, Adams has won 24 straight against the Falcons. Um, Rochester has not beaten Adams since 1996. Um, week three, they take on Clarkston. Um, both the Wolves and the Highlanders have had some battles. Um, Adams, of course, won 29-28 back in 2019. That was the game that, one of the games that knocked Clarkson out of the playoffs in 2019. So, it'll be a very interesting matchup there. Um, week four, they go to Lake Orion to take on the Dragons, of course. Um, Lake Orion's won two straight against Rochester Adams. Um, again, the Dragons and the Highlanders have had some battles in the past. So, um, that'll be a very, very interesting matchup there. September 23rd, they're home with West Bloomfield. Of course, last season, Adams had to beat, beat West Bloomfield twice. Um, they knocked them off in the playoffs in the regional final. And they, um, it was a crazy 14-13 game. Um, Adams trope 13-0 in that match, but came back and won that game. Um, and then week six, they take on Oxford, of course. Um, of course, Adams knocked off Oxford twice last year. Um, they knocked Oxford from the playoffs as well. Um, so that's going to be an interesting matchup for, um, and I talked to Coach Line about this in the podcast a couple weeks ago, um, about how they match up with Adams. It's going to be a very interesting, it's going to be a daunting task for the um, Wildcats in that game against the Highlanders. Um, September, October 7th, they take on Stony Creek. Of course, um, Adams has won seven of the last nine meetings against Stony Creek. So that'll be very interesting there. Um, week 8, they take on Harper Woods. It's their first meeting. Um, with the Pioneers. It'll be an interesting matchup, clash of two different styles. And then week nine, they go to Runkle Field to take on Sterling Heights Stevenson. Adams has lost the last five meetings to the Titans, with the last meeting being in 1998, um, where they lost 27-20 in a regional final. So when you look at Adams this year, the Highlanders have a lot of expectations. They're gonna be one of the top teams ranked in the state with who they got back. You got Pico back, you have, you have pre-scoring, you have they have a lot of proven skill players. The line's a question mark. Um, but when you look at Adams this year, they could be in prime position to, to, be another, to have another great special year again for Adams. And program strength is a big concern for the Highlanders, especially in the lower levels. So that's something to really watch for in the future for Rochester Adams. So that'll be something to watch for. But this year's group of Highlanders this year is going to be a very, very talented group. Let's go now from the Highlanders. Let's go to the Wolves at Clarkston. Of course, Clarkston um, made some changes this offseason. They got a new coach in Justin Pinter taking over. They're going to they're gonna have a new quarterback taking over. They got a lot to look forward to. So here's new Clarkston Wolves coach Justin Pinter at the podium. All right. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you to Coach Vernon for setting us up uh, and having us here today. Before I get into anything, I'll have the players here introduce themselves and then we'll talk a little bit about the season. Michael Hine, quarterback. Dylan Hunter, uh, linebacker. Cole Dellinger, O line, D line. Ethan Clark, running back. So uh, we're coming off a an eight and two season last year. Um, lost to a tough Oxford team in the playoffs. Um, it was one of those games where they kind of controlled the tempo a little bit, and, and we turned the ball over a couple times, and, and they ran the ball really well, and we didn't have a uh, we didn't do a good job of stopping them, so we were disappointed in how the season ended, but we're excited about what we got coming back this year. Um, we have, uh, you know, three stars back in our offensive line. We have our running back here uh, coming back after a great year, so we're really excited about what we have um, coming back. Um, our schedules, of course, we know we were at very, very difficult. We have some tough non-conference games, um, so we know it'll be a challenge, but we're really excited about where the program's at. Um, thank you guys. Good luck to everybody. Stay healthy. When looking at the Wolves this year, their strength obviously is going to be their skill positions. Um, I was very surprised in a, um, in a different podcast that um, Coach um, Pinter went with Mike Hine as a starting quarterback. Um, very curious to see how Hine does this year, replacing a three-year starter, Mike DePillo. Um, Ethan Clark is the real deal at running back. Um, what he's done ever since being called up to varsity um, as a sophomore, he's 
played really, really well. He's expected to be one of the top running backs in the state of Michigan this year. The line is going to be very interesting. Of course, you have Michigan State commit Cole Dillinger coming back. Um, you have Gavin Hackenden is another one of those uh, linemen to watch for. Cole Jarvis is another one at wide receiver to keep an eye on. He's expected behind his top target this year. Um, Brody Cozen at tight end, a safety valve for Hine this year. Obviously, it's going to be a big deal there. Defensively, when you look at Clarkson, you look at Dylan Hunter at linebacker. You got Kavanaugh Dighton also at linebacker as well. And then your defensive secondary with Desmond Steffens um, and Jalen Wilson. Of course, Steffens is coming back from an injury he sustained during basketball season. Um, so when you, and then so when you look at the Wolves this year, there's a lot of depths, a lot of proven experience coming back. Question's gonna be is especially on both sides. Defense is a big concern for me, especially, you know, there's been some games at Clarkson, you have a lot of points. So I caught up with Coach Pinter to talk about the Wolves um, coming into the season. I got the co new coach of Clarkson Wolves, Justin Pinter here. Coach, um, interesting that you named your Mike Helm your starting quarterback um, on, a, on a podcast. Um, how did that decision come up? Well, uh, Mike's been with us since uh, his sophomore year, so we've, we've had a chance to see him for you know two-plus years now. Um, he's played backup quarterback for us. He hasn't been our starter because we had a three-year starter in Mike DePillo. Um, but we know what he's capable of. The, the senior class has really rallied behind him. Uh, he's had a great summer. His seven-on-sevens uh, this summer I, I thought were really, really good. So we feel really confident about him as a leader. Um, he's going to be a little different style, I think, than what we've had at quarterback. He gives us a little different dimension, but we're really confident in what he's going to be able to bring to the table for us this year. Talk about your defense. I mean, like last season, you know, in the postseason, it hasn't been the greatest, of course. Two years ago was the Grand Blank. Last year was Oxford. Um, talk about and the strides your defense has made. So uh, defensively, yeah, we, I mean, we struggled a little bit, I think, stopping the run last year, so that's going to be kind of a key for us, right? If you can stop the run and make teams one-dimensional, uh, that makes you obviously a lot better. So um, we want to be able to stop the run. We want to be able to create turnovers and generate turnovers. Our, our scheme will probably look a little different this year than it has in the, in the past. Uh, we have a new defensive coordinator, and a, our defensive staff's changed quite a bit. So there will be some, some new wrinkles, um, and like I said, hopefully stop the run, uh, generate turnovers, um, and get the ball back to the offense. What are your invitations to your coach? Say that again? Expectations. Um, so I really feel good about this team. Um, our, our team chemistry is really strong. We got a lot of key guys back. Um, we got a lot of skill guys that I think are going to create a lot of matchup problems. So we're really optimistic about the team. Our, our schedule, of course, in the, in the OA Red is, is very uh, difficult. Um, our non-conference is, is just as difficult playing Davison and Lapeer. So um, we're really optimistic, but we also know that week in and week out we're going to be challenged, so we got to come ready to play. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. When looking at the Wolves' schedule this year, I mean, it is, it's tough, but it's very manageable. When you look at Clarkson this year, they got six games on the road this year. So when you really look at the Wolves' um, schedule, um, it is daunting, but looks manageable. They open up the year with Davison at Michigan Stadium on, thurs on a Thursday night. Of course, um, they've won four straight against the Cardinals, including whether it's in regular season and the postseason. Last season, Clarkson won 29-26 over Davison at Michigan. So now you think about it, now Clarkson having to wear white. Davison's going to be wearing red um, or yellow. Um, or, I mean, like this upcoming um, game at Michigan Stadium. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Davidson has one of the toughest schedules in the state of Michigan this year. When you look at the teams they play, um, including the likes of Novi Detroit Catholic Central on that one. So it'll be an interesting matchup to see where Clarkson's at um, in this first game against um, Davis in week one. Week two, they host Southfield. Um, the Wolves have really had the Warriors number. They've won five of the last six games against a and including last season when they won in Southfield. Um, I think it's a very interesting matchup. I'm curious to see how Clarkson defends a and I think they're going to score against them, so that's going to be really interesting there in that matchup there. Week three, they take on Adams, of course. Clarkson and Adams, they've had some battles. I mean, like, when you really look at that matchup, um, I mean, like, there's been years where Adams has won. There's been years that Clarkson's won. I mean, Last, the last time these two teams met was in 2019 um, where um, Rochester Adams um, 
were B. Clarkson, a Adams, um, where Clarkson blew a two-score lead late. It was a 28-27 win for Adams over Clarkson in that game. Um, so that'll be very interesting there. And then September 16th, um, Clarkson goes back to the Swamp to take on West Bloomfield. Uh, now, last season's game was at the Swamp. Um, that was a very, very close game. Went either way. Um, it could have gone either way. West Bloomfield won that 134-27. It, it was a crazy, crazy game. Uh, I'm not sure why this game's back at the Swamp again this year, but it, but it looks but the game is back at the Swamp this, this time around. So don't be surprised maybe in the next two years that um, you know, West Bloomfield goes back to Clarkson two straight years. So that'll be really, really interesting how the scheduling makers look at that series. Um, week five, Clarkson takes on Oxford. Of course, um, Clarkson's won eight of the last 10 meetings against the Wildcats, but last season, the playoff game um, where Oxford, where Salva Carl went nuts for four touchdowns in a 38-28 stunner um, for the Wildcats at Clarkson a year ago in the first round. So that'll be really interesting there. Um, week number six, they take on Stony Creek. Of course, um, Clarkson won that 134-13 last season. Um, so that's going to be another very interesting matchup there. And then week seven, they go to Lake Orion and take on the Dragons. Um, Clarkson is 10-1 in their last 11 games against Lake Orion. And you look at that and you go like, what's going on here with, Lake, with this series? It hasn't really been much of a series lately. So it'll be an interesting matchup. Um, curious to see how this match is going to look like heading into the year. Um, but if you're Lake Orion, you're looking at your 1-10 against Clarkson in the last 11 games, you got to figure you might want to turn that around. Clarkson looking for their, um, for their um, 11th and 12 tries against the Dragons. Um, that game will be very, very interesting there. And then week number eight, they take on Lapeer at Lapeer. Of course, the Wolves have won the last five meetings against CM Lightning, including in the playoffs as well. They've won a couple games in Lapeer as well. This game will be up in Lapeer as well. So Lapeer's got a very young team coming back. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the light with that matchup this year. And then week nine, they close out the year at Oak Park. Of course, Clarkson is seven and three in the last ten meetings, including last year where um, where the Knights um, fell to the Wolves fifty to twenty eight. It was a wild and crazy game in that one. So when you look at Clarkson this year, the expectations are high. You know, new coach, new program, new system, new schemes. Program strength is always high at Clarkson. Freshman class looking very good over there. They got a very good um, sophomore class as well, and their juniors and seniors are very good. So a lot to look at with Clarkson heading into the year. They're, I think the Wolves could be a team that could surprise some people this year. Um, they could make some noise this year. Um, we'll see what, they, what Clarkson has this upcoming season. So that's something to really watch for this year. Let's go now from Clarkson to Lake Orion. When you look at the Dragons, um, last year was not a good year for Lake Orion. I mean, like, they, their defense really struggled. They allowed 50 points, two games, and two of the games. They, you know, they got a lot, you know, that didn't go right last year for them. Now they got a new coach um, and former coach and um, Lake Orion Athletic Director Chris Bell taking over the program. So... Here is Lake Orion coach Chris Bell at the podium talking about the Dragons. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be back. Uh, and having stepped away for the past five years, uh, I'll talk more about that later. But, uh, I appreciate every day the opportunity to work with our young men. I've got some great young men. Uh, thank you, Dean, Eric, and Rochester for hosting this event. Uh, I know our kids will look forward to it. I would like to have my players introduce themselves, and we'll talk about our season. Dorian Hill, receiver. Patrick Rowan, linebacker. Carlo Fortino, O line. James Patterson, Jr., defensive end. All right, four great leaders for us. Uh, at Lake Orion, we've got a, a mixture, a great mixture of returning players. Last year, the team was three and six, uh, but we returned six who have started at one point on offense, six on defense. We also have an undefeated freshman team, undefeated JV team in the program. So there's a lot of talent coming forward. Uh, you know, we're very, like everybody else, they've had a great summer, worked very hard, and we're very excited about the season. Uh, also playing the OA Red and our non-league opponents. We've got a great challenge in front of us, we're looking forward to it. 
I will tell you, as the athletic director uh, in the OAA, I take a lot of pride in uh, OAA football, not just in Lake Orion. As long as you're not playing us, you know, I root for all of our OAA teams. Uh, a little research, you know, we've had great teams, great coaches, very talented athletes, but to gain a perspective of the kind of football we play in the OAA, in the past 14 years, an OAA team has played for or won the Division I state championship nine of those 14 years. All right, and if you look at the other leagues around the state, no other league comes close. So we play some great football in the OAA, so that's something really to be proud of. Uh, I wish everybody the best of luck. As I said, stepping back in as a head coach after being out for five years to give me great perspective. Coaches cherish every day you have with the players because once you step away, it's never the same. And student athletes, I challenge you to get the most out of your season. Play the game the right way. Play with great respect for your opponents. They're not your enemies, they're your opponents. All right, great sportsmanship, great respect for the other people on the other side. But most of all, be great leaders in your school building because there is no greater leadership group than the varsity football team in your school buildings. That's a challenge to you. Best of luck to all, and thank you. Interesting stat that Coach Bell said about the um, about the OA. Obviously, nine in the last fourteen um, years, there's been a team from the OA that's made the division, made the Division One state finals. Um, really interesting stat to um, you know when you really look at the status of this league as a whole. Um, when you look at Lake Orion this year, players to watch for Dorian Hill. Obviously, he's a big one for Lake Orion to watch. Um, at slot receiver, he'll play some running back. Um, you got Billy Roberson at running back as well. Darren Jones is, a, is one of the kids I'm really high on this year that can make some noise. The offensive line, when you look at players like Carl Fortino, um, Connor O'Rourke, um, then defensively is where I think Lake Orion needs to really improve on. Um, you do have Judah Kinney coming back. You have um, James Patterson up there on the defensive line as well. Alex Fisher as well. Um, Patrick Rowland at linebacker. Um, you got Corbin Smith at, um, in def at defense back. Trey Pacmar is another one to watch for. Um, when you look at the Dragons, the quarterback situation is a big question mark cut with this team coming into the year. Of course, Lake Orion had a quarterback in Kyler Carson last year. He's graduated. So, when it, so I talked to Coach Bell um, addressing the Dragons' concerns, the off-season the off-season concerns that I have had about this team coming into the years, and a lot of the questions about this program coming into the year. I got Lake Orion returning coach Chris Bell. Coach, um, nice to see you again. Thank you. It's awesome to be back. Um, talk about your team. Uh, of course, quarterback is a um, question mark for you guys. Um, how is the quarterback situation doing? Good. Yeah, we've got a couple good athletes. Uh, we've got three really good pro three really good quarterbacks in the program. The freshman guys are young, but they're doing a good job. But we'll be solid there. They're good athletes, and they can make every throw. They've had a good summer, so uh, they're not big name guys yet. But uh, we got some good players. Talk about your off season, of course. How's that off season been? Well, they're learning a new system offensively, uh, but they've they've worked their tails off in the weight room. Uh, they've done a good job in our seven on sevens. They've done everything that we've asked them to do. Uh, they're learning. We've made some adjustments on defense. They said the new offensive system, so um, we're excited to get going. What is your expectation this year, Coach? I, our expectation, we're going to compete for a championship in the OAA Red. And a lot of people are going to look past us, which is fine. That's, that's the way we like it. But what we will be introducing ourselves to a lot of teams. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at the Dragons this year, of course, the weaknesses, and I do agree with Coach Bell on this quote. They need to play, play better on both sides of football. And that was one of the biggest reasons why Lake Orion struggled last year was they, they got to play better. And that's the bottom line when you look at the Dragons this upcoming season. When you look at the schedule this year for Lake Orion, it is almost the same as last year. Um, they do open up the year at Swinehart Field against Utica Eisenhower. Um, these two teams have had some classic battles. Um, whether it's been in the postseason, I remember the 2008, 2010, and 2012 playoffs, of course, where Lake Orion won those games. Um, Utica Eisenhower returned the favor back in 2019 when they um, beat Lake Orion in the district final. And then last season, they played in the regular season, and the Dragons won that 133-7. Um, now, with Utica Eisenhower, they do return a very good quarterback in Preston Crum. Um, so that's going to be very interesting, of course. Um, he did get hurt in that game last year against Lake Orion, celebrating a touchdown. So when I look at this matchup here, 
it's a battle of can Lake Orion find a way defensively to contain Preston Crum? That is the big key for them in that game. In that game, um, I'm curious to see how this defense is going to look this year, uh, when you, especially in that game against Utica Eisenhower. If they win that one, it's a big statement for the league. Big statement for the big statement. You know, like when you look at that, when you look at Lake Orion, um, Lake Orion and Eisenhower, classic battles. It's going to be a real interesting matchup between those two teams on that Thursday night at Swinehart Field um, on the campus of Utica High School. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, September 2nd, um, Lake Orion hosts Oak Park. Of course, the Dragons have won five straight meetings against the Knights. Um, when you look at in the coaching matchups, it's going to be very interesting between Coach Chris Bell and Coach Greg Carter. Um, Oak Park, of course, last season, um, I mean, they lost, I mean, like they had a struggling year, but so did Lake Orion. So these are two teams that are looking for bounce back seasons this upcoming season. Week three, this is a double O trophy game for against Oxford. I remember that game real well last year when Lake Orion gave up 51 points in a 51-27 loss. That was the most points in in um, school history in a four quarter game that Lake Orion has ever allowed and it was 51 points to their arch rival. And that was a that was a very humbling experience last year. So Lake Orion will look to um, try to get the double O trophy back to Lake Orion. Um, you know, this upcoming season going up to Oxford to take on a very, very determined Wildcats program this year. Um, week number week number four, they host Rochester Adams. Um, I remember that game real well back in 2019 where that was a that was a emotionally charged game that was played on a Saturday night. Um, Lake Orion won that one 36-31. Uh, it was a absolute crazy game. So Lake Orion's won Lake Orion's won the last two meetings against Rochester Adams. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, also the coaching matchup between Coach Chris Bell and Tony Petrito. That is going to be really interesting to keep an eye on. Um, week number. Um, Week number um, five, it's Stony Creek. Um, at Stony Creek, it's Stony Creek's homecoming. Um, when you look at this matchup here, um, it's gonna be interesting. Lake Orion is five and two against Stony Creek in their last seven meetings. Um, it's gonna be a really interesting matchup um, with Stony Creek, a veteran team. Lake Orion won last year at St I mean, against Stony Creek. Um, it was a it was a stunner to say the least there in that game. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in that one. And then September 30th, week six at the swamp to take on West Bloomfield. Lake Orion's lost eight straight games to Lakers. That has to change if Lake Orion wants to say they're back this year. That has to change. It is not an easy matchup, but I think they got a chance against West Bloomfield. We'll see what happens there in that one. Um, week number um Week seven, they take on Clarkston. It's their homecoming this year. Interesting stat, Lake Orion's one in 10, their last lap meetings against Clarkston. They, they, they gave up 50 points last year, the Wolves. I mean, like, so when you look at this matchup here, it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens here in this matchup here. Um, week, four, week eight, North Farmington. I remember the game last year, week two, when Lake Orion gave up 44 points in the stunning 44-22. Stunner at Holland Field. Now they get to go back to Holland Field this year to take on the um, Raiders. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting matchup there. And then week nine, Lake Warren closes out with Celine. Celine is a powerhouse in the SEC. Um, they got a good, quarter, great quarterback in CJ Carr. Um, it's going to be very interesting there. Last season, these two teams played at Celine, um, where Lake Warren lost that 134 21 to the Hornets last season. So when you look at the Dragons this season, a lot of challenges ahead for them, but Lake. But I know Coach Bell said um, Lake Orion they want to reintroduce themselves to to the rest of the state. I think they got a great chance to this year with the experience they got coming back. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens with Lake Orion this upcoming season. So let's go on from the Dragons. Let's look at the Wildcats of Oxford. Of course, Oxford had a very good year last year. They of course, played one of the toughest schedules in the state of Michigan. They got in the playoffs by knocking off Chippewa Valley, and then got and then they stunned Clarks in the first round. And then, and then the off season, we all know about what happened. Um, 
Yeah, so here's Oxford Coach Jack Wine um, talking about the state of the Wildcats. First off, I want to thank Coach Vern, Rochester, for having us out. Um, I also want to thank all those schools that actually reached out and offered support. Um, that a lot. Uh, we're going back to last season. Um, we were 1 4 at one point, we finished the season 6 and 5. So that's a testament to this group. And a weird word in football or for men is love. They love each other. So. Um, these guys continue to do that. I really don't care if it's senior, junior, freshman, sophomore. If there's love in the locker room and they're playing together, they're going to play on Fridays. So um, this group has done an unbelievable job. Bravo. Um, these right here are some of Tate's closest friends, so um, they're playing on a mission. They're on a mission this year, so um, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, linebacker, running back, senior, Marco Vaccaro. Ryan Chisholm, wide receiver, corner. Uh, Cam Jarrett, running back, linebacker. I uh, hope everybody has a good season, stays healthy. Our two non-league games are um, Romeo first week and the Chippewa Valley. So, good luck. When you look at the Wildcats this year, they, there was a, there's a quarterback competition between three guys that I am. Um, you know, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what the direction Oxford goes with this year. Um, they do have a very good running back in Cameron Jarrett. Um, I remember what he did last season. They got Gavin Allred up front, um, Sean Wilson also up front. Um, you know, and then you look at obviously the returners Oxford's got. I mean, like, you know, there's not a lot. I mean, this is going to be a very young team when you look at the Wildcats this year. A lot of sophomores up from that team that win. Um, that um, went eight and one last season. So when I look at Oxford this year, there is a lot of questions when you look at the Wildcats. And I did talk to um, Coach Line on the podcast, um, and I also got an interview with him as well. So here's my interview with Coach Line on the state of the Wildcats. I got the coach of the Cats, Coach Zach Line, of course. I got Coach of the Cats, Zach Line here. Coach, um, how's the quarterback situation been since the last time we talked in the pod? Still a competition, um, it'll be a good one. You know, at the end of the day, competition drives greatness. So um, once we hit week one, we'll uh, we'll be ready to roll. Talk about your murder's role with non-conference. Got Romeo and Chippewa Valley again this season. Talk about your non-conference, getting you ready for the red. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's much of a difference between our in-conference and non-conference game. It's all it's all a test, but we just look at it week at it, week by week. Um, each one is worth one unit, um, and so we'll prepare for each of them the same way. What are the expectations here, Coach? You know, we're going to compete. Um, you know, right now we're, we're going to focus on building building our culture, uh, building our work ethic uh, through training camp. Putting the pads on will tell us a lot. Um, so I, I don't want to forecast too far in the future. All I'm focused on right now is our first practice. Thank you real much, Coach. You bet. When you look at the Wildcats this year, honoring 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 those what happened back in November. Um, it's going to be very interesting this year with the schedule when you look at the Wildcats. Um, Oxford opens up the year at Barnabal Field against Romeo. Um, these two teams have had some battles. I mean, Oxford is 2-4 and four in their last six meetings against Romeo, including last year, where they were three plays away. Even that score looked very deceptive last year. So when I look at Oxford, that game with Romeo, it's going to be interesting. I'm very curious to see how... Oxford and the young guys there, they step up in that game against um, Romeo. It's at Barnabal Field. It's not like, Barnabal Field has changed though. I mean, gone from the days of being on grass, being um, being on grass at um, the former Powell Middle School. It's Romeo's new middle school, it's Romeo's new high school now. Um, so I'm curious, that's gonna be a very interesting matchup between the Wildcats and the Bulldogs um, going out there in Macomb County. So that'd be very interesting there to open up the year. And then week two, first meeting with Groves. Um, there's gonna be, it's gonna be an emotionally charged atmosphere. Um, very curious to see what happens here in this matchup. Um, I'm like I said, it's first meeting. Um, how does Oxford match up with Groves? How does Groves match up with Oxford? This game could be a real interesting game. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good one. I know there's gonna be a lot of emotion, a lot of, um, I mean, like, it's going to be it's going to be an emotional one, obviously, for the community. You know what I mean? In that game, at the first home game of the year for Oxford, taking on um, a very good, taking on a very solid growth program 
that'll be a very interesting matchup. And then September 9th, the double O trophy game with Lake Orion. Of course, um, Oxford won 51-27 last season um, at Dragon Stadium. Um, Lake Orion's had Oxford's number on the at Oxford, so it'll be very interesting how how that's going to be. It's a rivalry game as well, so you know, you know, um, Wildcat Stadium is going to be emotionally charged this year. Um, going to be fired up, especially in that rivalry game for sure. Um, week four, they take on Stony Creek. Oxford's won five of the last six against the Cougars. So when you look at the um, when you look at that matchup here, it's going to be interesting. Um, how Ox, how um, both teams, you know, Stony Creek's got more experience this year. Oxford's a little bit young this year, so it'll be. I'm very curious to see how that matchup goes. Um, week number five, they take on Clarkston. Um, one and three in their last four meetings, but remember the playoff game last year, obviously when Salva Carl went nuts for four touchdowns. Um, also. Um, you know, Brady Carpenter had a really nice big game last year, and also Tate Mir did as well in that game against Clarkston. Um, week number six, they take on Adams. Of course, Adams, Oxford's lost six straight to the Highlanders, including in the, including twice last year. So that'll be really interesting to see. Um, can Oxford find a way against Adams? That's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. Week seven, they take on West Bloomfield. Um, Oxford's lost eight straight games to the Lakers. It's at the Swamp this year, so it's going to be a very daunting task for the Wildcats heading down there, heading up the heading down the Swamp. So it'll be really interesting there. Um, week nine, um, they take on Bloomfield Hills. Um, Oxford won 42-21 back in 2019. Um, it's going to be an interesting match. I'm curious to see how the Wildcats defense matches up with C.J. Jackson and the Blackhawks there. And then week nine, they go to Chippewa Valley. Of course, we know what happened last year um, Coach Scott, against Coach Scott Merchant's team. Oxford won that one 29-28 back in um, last season. That game got Oxford into the playoffs. So when you really look at the Wildcats this season, um, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of pride, a lot of emotion, you know, heading into the year, especially with everything that Oxford's went through. The communities went through, the schools went through. I mean, just everything. I mean, I know that um, OCTV this year is gonna have all the Wildcats home games this year. So it'll be very interesting to see what Oxford has this year. There's gonna be a lot looking forward to this year with the Wildcats um, this upcoming season. So let's go now from Oxford, let's go to Stony Creek, of course. Um, Stony Creek's a team that Last year was the first team to miss out on the playoffs. So, he, Sony Creek's coach Nick Merlo was not at media day this week. He was up on he was on vacation up in the Upper Peninsula. I did get him on a podcast as well. So here is Stony Creek coach um, Nick Merlo at the um, podium talking about the Cougars. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks again to Rochester, as everyone said, for hosting this event. Coach Merlo uh, unfortunately could not be here, so he sent me one of his newest uh, higher coaches. Um, been around the program for three years, had some ups and downs while I've been around it. Uh, first year coaching, it's an honor to be working with these boys and the coaches there. Uh, some of our strengths are coming back for returning 17 to 22 starters. So building off a season that I'd say we were disappointed in, a great competition that we had to play. And looking forward to this season and building with our returning guys and what we got to do and armoring up. Sammy Durbin, my receiver. Uh, Seth Lumen, linebacker, tight end. Kendall Pape, offensive line. John Fogler, running back, DB. Justin Taylor, quarterback. It's always good being a coach and every player being bigger than you. So good luck to everybody. Stay healthy, and we'll see you out there. Look forward to meeting everybody. The yeah, Arab culture is going to be very interesting this year. They return seven, Stony Creek returns 17 of their 22 starters. Led, of course, by running back John Fogler. Um, I talked to Coach Merlo on the podcast. If I will have that link as well. I will also have Oxford's link on the podcast as well. Also will be on the um, blog as well at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, Stony Creek's going to have a new quarterback this year, and Justin Taylor taking over. Um, it'll be very interesting. I know um, in talking to Merlo, he's really high on Sam McDermott, Jonah McKay. 
Um, the offensive line is going to be really interesting to watch. I mean, Kendall Pape, Jim McCall, Oshiro, Calvin Gibson, Jacob Krokak, and Roman Lamper are coming back up front. Um, ben Corson's another name to watch. Um, Seth Lumen at linebacker, Adam Bessé, Adam is also at linebacker, Kyle Parks in the secondary. There is a lot of questions at wide receiver and in the secondary as well for Stony Creek. So when you look at the Cougars, you know, when you look at, and I like what Stony Creek does. I mean, like, um, I, and I talked about the Dutton Farm game. That will be mentioned, of course, that is their week three game against West Bloomfield. That is something that'll be, we're going to mention that. Um, it's also mentioned real deep on the podcast as well. So when you look at Stony, and they also have Quentin Yabali had on the kicking duties as well. So when you look at the schedule for Stony Creek, it is really interesting. I mean, when you look at the Cougars, um, on that question mark, they did add Detroit Mumford in that one. That'll be a very interesting matchup with the Mustangs. Um, th- I mean, it's the first meeting between Stony Creek and Detroit Mumford, so that'll be really, really interesting matchup there. Of course, um, they were supposed to play Port Huron, but Port Huron found a, um, you know, it's got a different opponent, so Detroit Mumford stepped in, and Stony Creek's going to play them on the 25th at, um, in Detroit, so that'll be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week two, they take on Bloomfield Hills. Um, that was this is a game of 2016 where Bloomfield Hills won that one, 35-16. Um, like I said, it's a much different staff. Merlo there, um, Stony Creek, much better team. Bloomfield Hills, we know they got a very good quarterback in C.J. Jackson. The question is going to be is whose style of offense wins out? Is it Bloomfield Hills' spread, or is it going to be Stony Creek's time possession offense, of course, led by? Of course, John Fogler in their strength up front. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup, a clash of two different styles there. Week three, they take on West Bloomfield at home. They lost 24 to 10 at the Swamp last season. Um, very curious to see how that matchup is going to look. Um, can Stony Creek slow West Bloomfield down? That's the big question there. September 16th, they take on Oxford on the road. Stony Creek has lost six of the last seven meetings to the um, Wildcats. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. See how Stony Creek matches up there in that one. September 23rd, they take on Lake Orion. Um, it's Stony Creek's homecoming. And um, Stony Creek's 2-5 and five against the Dragons in their last seven meetings. And that is going to be a really interesting matchup. Is Lake Orion defensively improved? Can Stony Creek run the tie possession offense against the Dragons like they did in 2019? So that'll be very interesting where they limited Lake Orion to only 14 plays. I remember that one real well in the postseason. Um, September 30th, they take on Clarkston on the road last year. Of course, the um, Cougars lost 34-13 to the Wolves last season. Um, well, that's going to be a very interesting matchup there. October 7th, they take on Adams on the road. Um, Stony Creek has lost seven of the last nine meetings to Rochester Adams. So that's going to be a interesting matchup but Stony Creek has you know last few years I know back in 2020 when they had that special team they knocked off Adams on the road so it'll be very curious to see what happens there in that one um, week number eight they take on Rochester Ro- I mean at- Stony Creek's won seven last nine meetings against Rochester um, this is an interesting matchup here because Stony both teams got experience both teams you know, 14-7 last year. I expect a low-scoring game again this year between the Cougars and the Falcons over at Stony Creek. And then week nine, they close out the year with New Baltimore Anchor Bay. I mean, I know Mike Gioni coached at um, Macomb, Dakota, Warren, De La Salle. He's also at New Baltimore Anchor Bay. It's the first meeting between these two teams. Um, could that be for a playoff spot on the line? Maybe. So we'll see what happens there in that matchup. I think Stony Creek, I think Stony Creek could surprise some people this year. Um, really high on the Cougars with their experience. They're going to be hungry. They're motivated. Um, back to, with the game with West Bloomfield, it's their Dutton Farms game. Of course, um, I, of course, um, Coach Merlo did mention it. It's on the podcast, so I will have that link also up. It's on the blog as well at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com to talk about what Dutton Farms, you know, I mean, what Dutton Farms and Sony Creek football um, program do for each other they have a game where Sony Creek wears special uniforms so it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens um, with the Cougars this season they're gonna be a solid team this year Um, I'm high on this team they're gonna be solid this year Um, let's go to our last team which is West Bloomfield 
Um, when you look at the Lakers last season, um, th this team was young last year, but you know they ran into Rochester Adams. They lost to him in the regular season and lost him in the postseason. So here is Coach Terry Scrice talking about the Lakers heading into the season. Thanks everybody for uh, giving this opportunity to showcase our players. And uh, uh, been around for about uh, ten years at West Bloom, eleven year at West Bloomfield, seven years as head coach. Uh, I tell you what, we've been working our tail off this offseason with our guys, and uh, they've been in the weight room, they've been busting their tails. There is a special commitment this year. Uh, we, we, we lost, uh, we had to return 16 starters from last year's team, and uh, we're excited about this season. So I'm going from left to right over here. Introduce yourself, guys. Larissa Williams, DB. Somebody's working, my receiver, DB. Anybody uh, put on me, I'm touching. Brandon Davis, D line. Jameer Benjamin, corner receiver. Rob Harris, linebacker. Rick Nance, QB. Kari Jackson, linebacker. One of the strengths of this team this year is our, uh, our experience. We got a lot of guys coming back in almost every position in the field that we can uh, take this to the next level. We're looking forward to the OAA. It's a very competitive league. And we look forward to the challenges that you bring us to us every week here and now. So thank you, you guys for allowing us to showcase our new boys. We look forward to seeing you guys this season. Thank you. Oh, I got to one word. My guy wants to say a few words. Yeah, you know, we're looking for all the competition we want every day. You know, we're West Bloomfield, so we got great players, we got great coaches. So, you know, we're looking forward. We want everybody to bring it because we're going to bring it too. Thank you. A lot of confidence for that group. Really a lot of confidence in that group. You know, I'm very curious to see if that will be used as motivation or, you know, sometimes, you know, when you, when you, when you do that, it's just bad things usually happen. But when you look at West Bloomfield this year, obviously you got Raekwon Nance at quarterback. You got Kenny Jones at running back. You got um, Samaj Morgan, um, some Oregon going to Michigan next year. You got Amir Herring, um, offensive, defensive lineman. You got Dre Hill at tight end. Deontay Pittman is another athlete to watch for. You got Brennan Davis Swan at D line. You got Jimmy Benjamin in the secondary. Lonzo Williams um, also in the secondary. Um, Adrian Epps is at, in the secondary as well. I mean, you got Kari Jackson who came back from IMG Academy in Florida. He transferred back to West Bloomfield. Um, Montel Johnson's also at linebacker, and Robert Harris is at linebacker. They got Justin Ward and Ryan Crowmatter handling the kicking duties. So when I look at the Lakers, they have everything. They have the talent. They have 16 starters coming back. But what beat them last year was discipline. So I caught up with Coach Grice to address this issue of discipline. I got the coach to swap. Coach, Coach Travis, Therese Grice here. Coach, um, last season, you know, was, was um, Last season very interesting, of course. Um, I watched you guys play last year. Um, talk about last season a little bit and talk about your expectations for this season. Well, last year we, we had to replace 17 starters from the year before, and most of our players moved up from the JV. So there were some development issues that we, we had to work on, and, and so we give it the time. So we was, we was young. This year a lot of these guys returning. We're returning uh, 16 returning starters, so we got a lot of experience. And we got guys like... Kari Jackson play linebacker. He's a P5 kid who's going. We expect him to be dominant this year and really take us to the next level. Talk about the discipline. I mean, this is the one that you addressed. Um, this is the my biggest concern for you guys heading into the year. Um, talk about any 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 changes at all with discipline. Yeah, discipline is going to be the number one priority going into camp. Um, last year we felt that we we had too many penalties. Uh, going into the season and prevented us going all the way. We felt that if we could reduce our penalties, no one can stop us. So one of the things I'm going to try to do this year is, is uh, one, have some referees come out and go about go over what's, what you can and cannot do. And so that's something we want to do. Another thing is we're going to bring flags out ourselves as a coaching staff. So if we see it in practice, we're going to call it in, the, in practice. So we try to minimize that. So that's one of the areas that our biggest concern is uh, reducing our penalties. And we can do that. Uh, we, we can be unstoppable. What are the expectations here, Coach? I always stay championship. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you very much, Kari. Welcome back. If West Bloomfield wants to make it, make it back to Ford Field, they have to address discipline. And that is going to be the big question this year.
for the Lakers. They're going to be ranked, obviously. They're, I know they're ranked in a lot of polls coming into the year. So when you look at the schedule, it is interesting for West Bloomfield. They open up at Wayne State against Sterling Heights Stevenson. Of course, Sterling Heights Stevenson is going to be a young team this year, obviously, when you look at the Titans. Um, last season, uh, the last time these two teams met was in the district finals back in 2020. Uh, that's when Donovan Edwards went absolutely nuts in that one um, at Runkle Field where, um, where um, he, I think he had five touchdowns that game and a 63-6 blowout of, um, of the Titans at Runkle Field in the district final. So it was a big win at the time for Sterling Heights Stevenson, I mean for West Bluefield to knock off the Titans of Sterling Heights Stevenson. Week two, they're back home in the swamp. They take on Harper Woods. First meeting between these two teams. Um, really it, curious to see this matchup here with all the athletes on the field. Um, can Harper Woods find their quarterback and running back in this game? I mean, against a very, very loaded West Bluefield team. Um, week three at Stony Creek, of course, um, of course, West Bluefield won 24-10 last season in the swamp. Now they go back to Stony Creek. It'll be a very interesting matchup there. Week four, they're home against Clarkston. Um, they've won two of the last three meetings against the Wolves, including a last season's 34-27 um, um, classic over there. Of course, um, the last loss they, when they played at Clarkson, they lost that one in overtime, but the game's back at the Swamp this year. Um, week number five against Rochester Adams back at Adams. Um, when you look at this one here, the fact that West Bloomfield's two losses last year came to Adams. Um, one in the regular season, week one, and then the other one in the um, postseason. So that's going to be a real interesting matchup, of course. Um, Adams, I'm curious to see how the experience they have. They have, Tate, they have Parker Pico back at quarterback. So that's going to be really interesting there. Um, West Bluefield, obviously, with all the experience. Um, week number six against Lake Orion, the Lakers won eight straight. But, uh, but last year's game at Lake Orion, it was 28-21 in favor of West Bluefield last season. So that game could be a very interesting between the um, Dragons and the Lakers this year. Of course, these two teams have had some classics, of course, back in 2019, the four overtime game. That was absolutely insane there. Um, and then last year was 28-21. Of course, Lake Orion battled back to tie it, but then West Bluefield scored on a touchdown um, to win that game. Um, October 7th, they take on Oxford. Um, Lakers have won eight straight against the Wildcats, so that'll be really interesting there. Um, very curious to see what happens in that game. Um, Oxford, West Movement had almost had some, almost um, had some issues with Oxford last year in that one. Of course, Oxford almost came back to, um, to gave them a game for sure last season. Um, week number eight, they take on Southfield Arson Tech. Um, the Lakers are four and one against the, um, against the Warriors in their last five meetings. So that's gonna be really interesting there. And then they close out the year week number nine at home against Utica Eisenhower, of course. This is a really interesting matchup. Last season, these two teams played West Bluefield won 42-24 um, last season. So when you look at the Lakers this year, they have all the makings of a state championship team. They have the quarterback, running back, wide receivers, defense, secondary, linebackers, and line play. It's just the question for me is the penalties. If they can address those, then to me, this team looks like a team that could be prime, I think, to not only do very well this, up se this season, but maybe make that trip back to Ford Field. So let's look at the red projection this year. When you look at the red this year, I have like a lot of these teams, they look like they're playoff teams to me. And, you know, when you look at the schedule that everybody plays, of course, when you look at all these teams have really difficult schedules. Of course, West Bluefield obviously is the top team right now when I look at them, what they got coming back. Clarkson Adams are right now like the two, um, two and three respectively when you look at the Highland, when you look at um, both those two teams. I mean, like um, Clarkson, they got a lot of experience coming back. They got, you know, Ethan Clark at running back. I mean, like it can run the game down, slow it down. Um, Adams, we know what they got, I think. Adams is in line for a big year. I think Lake Orion is going to be a team that a lot of people don't want to see. I mean, I think when I look at seven wins, it looks reasonable. I think there is there is um there is lowest five, but highest seven. I think Lake Orion is right in that median there. I think you know when you look at Lake Orion. So I think the Dragons. I think they will be a, 
will be a postseason team this year with that schedule. Stony Creek, I think, you know, with them, I think they can win five games. Um, I think the Cougars with the schedule in the red, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. And then there's Oxford. Oxford, the schedule is brutal. Um, I just don't know with that young, with that team being very young, with everything that they've gone through. I know they're going to be up for the task, up for the challenge every week, but I just don't know if I see it. I mean, they got to replace the they got to replace a ton of quarterback. There, there's a lot of things to replace with Oxford um, this upcoming season. So they could surprise some people, but when I look at Oxford, that schedule, I just see two wins right now um, with the Wildcats coming into the year. So my top 10 heading into the rankings. Everybody's ranked in the red. I mean, when you look at West Bloomfield, I have the top team. Adams is the number two team. Clarkson ranked third. I have Lake Orion at five. Um, Stony Creek at nine. Oxford at 10. Now, these will not be the rankings um, when they come out. Of course, you want to look at the updated rankings. will be on the blog at second of 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, when you look at the, the league as a whole this season, Coach Chris Bell was right. Nine of the last 14 years, the OA has had state championship representation um, in, the, in the Division I level. Um, Division II, they've been really close as well with Oak Park, Groves, and Seaholm. Um, so when you look at this league as a whole, the league is strong this year. It's, it's one of the toughest leagues in the state of Michigan. It's going to be one of the, I expect all four divisions to be very competitive, very athletic, very... I, I expect all these teams to be very good, be in the conversation this year. Um, my final thoughts are, I wish everybody the best of luck in the red. I wish everybody the best of luck this season in the, um, in, in the entire OA this year. The OA is one, of the, is one of the best conferences in the state of Michigan, and there's a reason why. And there's 22 great teams in this league. And I expect, I expect there's going to be a lot of coverage on, on these 22 teams this season. Um, on the podcast. Also, there's going to be um, an also on the blog as well at second of 4650 at blogspot.com. So, the previews will be released um, coming up ne coming up next in a couple weeks. So, we'll see what happens going forward. Okay, now everybody, I'm going to sign it off here. Take care. Good luck to everybody this season in the OA. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you next week. God bless everybody.